So today we're going to be going over some of the procedures for casting. You can cast with our matrix material. Uh, here we have a, uh, a rubber mold and a mother mold underneath. Uh, we have some pieces that we've cast previously. Uh, I'm going to show some of the mistakes that can be made during casting. Um, we're doing a very small piece here. Uh, the piece uh, is pretty much a, a, what we call her the matrix lady, but a lady's face. And um, what we've casted here uh, is representative of a face. We have a pretty good cast here, not a lot of bug holes. Um, shows a good uh, feature. But one of the things you want to do is make sure that you have your mortar ready to go, your rubber molds ready to go. If you're doing a larger mold with a lot of intricate panels, you may want to uh, use a release agent, um, mold release agent. Some people will use uh, just like a uh, a dishwashing uh, liquid sometimes you want to uh, water it down a little bit but you can use that as a release agent there's other release agents out there from polytech and smooth on uh, you may want to use one of those but you don't want to use one that's going to uh, uh, be oil based so that it absorbs into the the masonry that you're casting so we have our piece our, our mold made and uh, the casting is ready to begin um, so what I did is I mixed up some matrix mortar uh, the mortar itself is it's not mixed up to as you would patch it it's it's dry and sandy so it's uh, it's it's less water than you would normally use it's enough uh, water to start the hydration process but not so much water uh, that we're not going to get a good finish when we when we do our cast so we're going to start uh, by taking some of that uh, mortar and placing it into our mold so typically I like to apply like an inch or two uh, depending on on the mold itself and then we're going to start a, a, a tamping process uh, I'm just going to use uh, the the butt end of this margin trowel but we could use other you want to make sure that your mold is seated well looks like I'm in there but we want to make sure that we're tamping this down so that we're getting all the bug holes and we see the detail uh, that is in the rubber mold and then as we tamp it down we can continue to add another inch or two of material uh, typically you want to do an inch or two at a time depending on the mold that you're doing uh, you may want to um, you know you, you could definitely do more uh, but the more ornamental uh, you really want to make sure that you get that tamping uh, in there so Not using a lot of pressure. Adding that last little bit, making sure it's a little bit too much just kind of leaving it open what we're going to do is as the the mortar starts to harden we can add uh, some water to the back side of this mold to make sure that we keep that hydration process going so just screening it down, have it nice and level. We can start our next one. You can see, uh, you know, when, when everything goes well in the mold, you have a nice uh, finish. Uh, this is not one of the ones that went well. This is actually one where you can see too much water uh, was added. I think I have another one here uh, where too much water was added. You can see those. Um, you see a lot of uh, kind of bug holing where you kind of have that wet pour look. Um, so that's why you don't want to add as much water as you typically would when you're patching with the matrix. Uh, also going too dry uh, could be an issue. If you look at too dry and you don't do the tamping down procedure, you can see this, you know, the bug holes look a little bit different, but this is when you don't tamp down the uh, uh, the material very well. So that tamping process really gives you great compaction uh, and gives you a nice uh, clean finish as you see in this face here. So that's what we're shooting for, um, and uh, that's what we hope to get. If you have any questions, give us a call at Comproco or visit our website, 
www.comproco.com. Thanks a lot.